Are you currently learning Ruby on Rails? If so, in this video, I'm gonna uncover nine mistakes I made learning the framework and what I want to help you avoid doing along the way. Number one is skipping the basics. I, I kind of wanted to focus on the things that are new and shiny, like in these this day and age is mostly like Hotwire or something of that effect where you get real-time updates. I think you should skip those. If you're learning the framework from day one, learn the basic fundamentals of HTTP requests, routing, uh, the, the basics of configuring a Rails app, even though most of it's done for you when you create a new app. Um, just don't skip over those concepts like active record, the query language, all that stuff is gold to learn first and you should understand it before diving into the more uh, nitty gritty features. Because honestly, there's so many under the sun that you can get into. There's features I've, I've you know, haven't even discovered yet and I've been using the framework for quite a few years now. So I couldn't do any of that stuff when I started and with enough repetition and enough like discovery, building apps, seeing the growing pains, all that stuff, you start to understand it more. Once you get to that point where it's like, you can just type the code, you don't have to refer to documentation or anything like that, I think as where you start to get into the area of using the latest and greatest kind of toolings. So keep that in mind as you're learning. Uh, number two is ignoring the documentation. So commonly in C in forums, people asking questions that are pretty obvious for me being in the framework for a while now, but in my learning experience at that time, I'd be the same person, like the person that's saying, how do I do this? I can't even get this to work, all this stuff that's pretty foundational. And honestly, I know the guides, they're getting an update now. Finally, the UI is looking a little better. I think they could be improved still, but that's a topic for another time. The um, guides pretty much lay it all out and it's part of the framework itself. So I think uh, the underlying code and stuff is there for your reading. And I actually recommend if you're, if you're brave enough to read the source code of Rails, you'll start to learn a lot more about the methods. There's a lot of comments in there that explain things a little better than even the documentation sometimes. And it took me a while to grasp that. Uh, initially, I would find an error, get an error. The documentation doesn't show you what to do to fix an error, but it does show you like, at least along the chain of the MVC concepts of a Rails app, you get to see how it got to that point, how things got hung up essentially. So recommend doing that before going to something like Stack Overflow or which we're all guilty of nowadays is using AI. So like OpenAI or whatever tool you use uh, to kind of get some sense of what's wrong. And I think honestly, the AI route is probably where I gravitate towards most these days, unless I just can't simply figure it out or it's regurgitating crap that I don't want to see, uh, which is common. So there are things you just, you gotta brute force your way through. So read the docs. Number three is Poor Git practices. So into the framework, if you're using Rails at all, you'll notice it's pretty much assumed that you know Git. And if you need to deploy an app, ever get it into production, that is probably the standard uh, order of operations is to deploy via Git some way or form. And I think that's foundational. So even before you get into Rails itself, I recommend going and making, maybe making just a simple HTML project, whether it's like CSS, HTML, JavaScript, whatever, and just version controlling it. Get used to creating branches, um, even tagging a branch if you think of maybe releasing a open source thing. Some of the, that foundational stuff, um, just, uh, just generally um, atomic commits, you know, writing good commit messages, all that stuff is good to have in your wheelhouse. You'll learn it working in a team, especially of how crucial that is. So I really recommend getting familiar with that model and just, you know, going down the rabbit hole of making sure you're practicing those, you know, philosophies with Git. Four, not testing crucial parts of your code. So I'm a believer of you don't need to write tests for every damn thing in your app. And honestly, I write very little tests because I'm scrappy like that. Most of the apps I build aren't like crazy production apps. I do work on a team that does write a lot of tests that is, you know, crucial for our app to, you know, make sure the logic is working. And that's what I recommend and condone personally. That's just my take. There's a lot of developers out there who would argue against it. You should, you know, go test driven first, write tests for really what makes sense and then go from there. Um, if you're like me, I, I write what I think really makes sense to write. So maybe something around billing logic or the core structure of creating some sort of resource in the app, making sure a request is good, all those kinds of things that really 
are going to affect the end user in the app and make make sure that that's working. Um, and then ultimately, when you do that, you find even though the hurdle up front is a lot more work, maybe more time, it saves you time in the end when you can run tests and know without even using your brain that the test passed and that probably means the app's functioning fine and all that is rosy. So don't neglect that. Number five is copying and pasting code, otherwise known as maybe using AI as well. Um, initially I did this just to get past errors I was getting in the apps. So if you're brand new to Rails, you're gonna find errors as you go. You write the wrong code, the syntax is weird. Ruby's pretty loose language, so you don't understand how things Things happen and along the way, you either stumble upon some code that someone has a solution for, use it in your app, you copy and paste it, it works, but then you just kind of neglect to understand it. I do that, I still do it. And honestly, if you can take the time at that moment and figure out what's, why, why you got to that point, it will save you and pay you a dividend in time. Um, I know it's hard to do because it's a like, you just want to get to that, that pillar that next pillar to get to your code to find the next thing. But at the end of the day, if you're doing that often, you don't actually learn how to you know, overcome that in the future. So like copying and pasting code gets you to point A to point B, but then understanding it the next time that comes around, which is probably going to happen, you are clueless again, then you're, you're finding yourself, you know, dependent on trying to find that solution again. So this is a common pattern. If you see blogs on my site, that's basically me regurgitating what I've learned. So I'll find myself Googling that error in, in the future and be silly me, I find my own articles. So it's kind of a nice little phenomenon that happens. Number six is overlooking security concerns. So any web app, honestly, this is something that gets overlooked, even though with Rails, a lot of it's baked in, which is great, but Basic security practices like parameter sanitation, sanitation, authentication, and authorization. So like people having access to the right things, making sure there's no bots or something in your app if you can help it. Sometimes that's hard. Um, just trying to be less vulnerable to security attacks is definitely crucial. So it's not always easy to understand how to be less vulnerable, but it is. There's some conventions, especially with Rails, that just uphold and make all that's a little bit easier. So it's something to consider and not ignore. Guilty of this one, number seven is ignoring performance. So a lot of times I'll just query, you know, the most gargantuan query in Active Record and it'll dump out the data I need and kind of just never look back. Oftentimes you want to join tables or something doing that to get rid of N plus one queries and all that stuff that uh, you overlook and until you use like a tool like I think bullet is one of the gems that helps you discover those Do you see how crappy your code is? So this is something to kind of go back through if you have a, an app that people are using or is in production and Getting some use or traction you might want to go back through and audit that and make sure those queries are performant as they can be uh, Number eight this probably should have come first or second but asking for help when you come into uh, trouble is kind of a you know a life thing honestly like if you have issues that you can't see through you're just stuck you want to give up honestly just asking someone else maybe if they obviously have been in that state would be best but sometimes people even outside that that world will give you a new perspective so that you could solve that problem in another way so that's something to consider especially for beginners because i know that that hurt of discovering a framework you want to use maybe having a big idea you want to build and you can't get it to a certain point because you're so hung up about a certain feature or error, or maybe you're just handling the whole logic a certain way that's just not gonna benefit you or your users in the long run. So it's something to consider as always, even in life, when the going gets tough, ask for help. Number nine is one I've actually, I remember on a Reddit community, in the Rails community, I think I responded to someone, they were trying to build an app and they got to a point where it was a roadblock, essentially, like the previous point, not asking for help. So they, so they did seek help and read it. And what they found is each time they got to that point, they give up and quit. The willpower isn't there to continue to strive to, you know, push through those barriers to get from point A to B and get that app or their idea essentially out there. And number nine, in my opinion, is having an ambitious enough goal when you're learning. So when you're creating a new app with Rails, it's assumed it's probably going to be some sort of web app. 
Uh, but these days it can be iOS. So pushing through those hurdles to get whatever that idea is out there is something that's really gonna make you grow as a developer. And I think it's the best way to learn. So personally, that's what I did. I had an idea for a designer tutorial site when I first started, and it was based on a, a Affinity Serif uh, products. So um, like a, the Photoshop and Illustrator clones, but cheaper. And I saw a, a value add there because it, you know, there was a community with that you know, world, even though it's not, didn't pan out essentially, but the idea was there and I thought it was pretty pretty cool idea at the time because I was more of a designer in that world. And that was my first inbound discovery with Rails. And I took it a step further and just pushed through trying to learn the framework to get everything from adding a video to having the next and previous you know, videos, all that stuff building logic, everything under the sun. And boy, was it hard, but I finally got to where I was pleased with the results and people, I actually made, you know, a first couple of sales and was surprised at it. And I, I made it through that challenge. And honestly, if I didn't have that goal, I wouldn't, wouldn't have made it. Cause I feel like I would have given up. I had this real, you know, drive underneath to, to get it and see it through. And I think that's, it goes back to more psychology. If, if you're that type of person that, scrappier entrepreneurial spirit type of person that's going to probably convey well with you as opposed to someone else who is maybe more of a passive player likes to just have you know go to work come home do their own thing that's fine it's just some of us might want to go be ambitious more so i think it's you know up to you in the end if you have that willpower enough to go also during that time when i was creating that app that's when the, the, this blog, this channel pretty much started and I was doing the, the, what's, what I call let's builds. So building small apps on the side just to get used to the motions, getting used to, you know, MVC pattern, all the Rails configuration stuff, routing, view stuff, all that stuff was pretty wild at the time. So if you see on the channel, the history, all the videos I've made, that was just me learning in public and I was crappy at it honestly probably other rails developers probably saw this channel and they probably still think i'm crappy and that's fine but to me it was just an excuse to make my stuff commit to learning to to get new ideas out of my head because i'm a designer first i wanted to build these things i didn't want to really depend on someone else to do it so i found value in that and learning so now i'm kind of i guess both in that world so that's number nine, that was it. Hopefully these help you if you're learning Rails. I know it's a, str a struggle to get across some of these hurdles if you're learning along the way. Definitely don't forget about documentation, skipping the basics and try to not look at the shiny objects. Who can't not look at the shiny object stuff like Hotwire, all the new JavaScript frameworks, all that CSS, Tailwind stuff. But at the end of the day, if you can't you know, get an app to production and it's functioning, what's, what good is all that other stuff? You know, so. Hopefully you like this content. If you like stuff like this where I'm talking more, let me know. I don't know if this is the way the channel is gonna go, but I'm trying to mix in some stuff where I'm talking to the camera or you in this particular example. And I'd wanna hear feedback from you in the comments so I can help you all along the way. Uh, give you some insight as far as what I know. I'm no perfect candidate for this, but I think just getting a little more talking going on, um, you know, spicing up the community as it's growing. There's kind of a re renaissance going on, which is cool. So I, I'm, I'm you know, able to contribute in some way or be of value. So that's it for now. I will see you in the next video. Peace.